Greetings good people and welcome to one in a series of strategic thinking concept videos. These videos are designed to drive small business forward. This one will examine two tools from our little red toolbox. Often we need a tool, a model to assist us in making a decision, a decision as to which printer to buy, which candidate to hire, which country to enter, which option to follow. A wonderful model for this is known as a simple multi-attribute rating technique or the acronym SMART. Not to be confused with the SMART acronym we use for objectives that are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time dated. How to construct a SMART? I have used the Cobra case materials for this explanation. Those of you who are interested may visit this site and see the source of the materials. The case provides the data for the SMART to undertake a competitive analysis within the shoe industry at the time of the Napoleonic Wars in Europe. I'd like to acknowledge former MBA students in the MBA executive program who have worked in part to assist me in this presentation. Step one, we identify key success factors. Key success factors are those factors that are absolutely necessary for you to compete in a particular industry. Without these key success factors, your chances of survival are minimal. Identify five to seven key success factors, attributes that are important to the industry. If you have 10, it's likely you've identified too many because they can't all be key success factors. If you have fewer than three, then my sense would be you wouldn't need the SMART model because the, uh, the weight of that one or two factors at 50 or 70 percentage points would be such that uh, you just have to measure that factor and if you have it, then you can go ahead. If you don't have it and your competition does, then you bypass it. Now have a look at this table. In the first column, under the heading, key success factors or attributes, we're going to list the key success factors and attributes uh, that we have identified from our research. Remember that the key success factors will normally be one or two or three of your firm's core competencies. And in rare cases, they may even be a distinctive competency or two. Here they are. In step two, we're going to weight those key success factors uh, in this particular column. After considering the importance of each attribute on any firm's success within the industry, Subjectively, we establish a weight and importance to each key success factor or attribute. As a consultant, I do this with my clients. I ask them as to the importance of these key success factors and attributes. The attribute that is determined to be the most important is allocated the highest weight, while the least important attribute is assigned the lowest weight. When all of the weights relative to importance are totaled, they must equal 100. Have a look at these. A caveat. The result of this model will be of little value if each of the key success factors or attributes you have weighted equally. For example, if you have five key success factors and each have a 20% point value, uh, thereby the, the attributes are of equal importance, the value of the model will be diminished. And as I pointed out earlier, if one of the key success factors has a significantly higher weight of say 70 points out of the 100 points, then the result will be of little value because as I mentioned before, uh, it, it influences so significantly that you might as well just measure that particular attribute and not undertake this particular model. In step three, I want you to identify the firms being compared across the top of the table. Add them in here. Record the names of the firms being evaluated. In the first column, you should identify the primary firm under consideration. In this case, your firm. In the remaining columns, Record the names and comparisons of the other firms, the rivals, the competition. We have identified your firm as the XYZ company in the first column, and your rivals as rival one, two, three, and four, uh, depending on the numbers that you have and determined by your research. In step four, we're going to grade each of the key success factors. There are possibly 10 grades that can be assigned to each key success factor attribute. The grade of 10 represents outstanding, Zero represents the lowest possible grade, indicating incompetence or non-existence, you don't have it. So now let's consider the first key successor attribute here, quality product performance. Uh, and based on your research and a review of the historical data, uh, we'll determine the quality of your product. Subjectively, uh, we are going to award a grade of between zero and 10 uh, for this key success factor. In this example, we have subjectively awarded a grade of eight to quality and product performance. Continue in this manner for each of the key success factors, attributes that you've identified in your model. Based on your research, carry out a similar assessment 
and apply subjectively the grades for each attribute of rivals 1, 2, 3, etc. You'll note that in rival 1's case, on quality product performance, it's only worth 5, uh, a low score. Continue this exercise for all of the key success factors for rival 1. In a similar fashion, now complete the model for each of the other rivals and we have subjectively allocated all the grades to the model as shown in this table. In step 5, we compute the weighted scores. This is done simply by mathematically multiplying the weight in the second column by the grade you've allocated for each specific firm. So for firm XYZ, multiply the weight allocated for the first key success factor, that's the quality product performance, 10, by the grade we've awarded that, that key success factor, a high 8, and the result is 80, as I say, a very high rating. In this case study, you'll find that the Black Watch Regiment liked the firm's buckle brogues. Record this resulting value on the chart. Continue this process by multiplying the weights and the grades for each of the attributes uh, to the bottom of the column, and then continue this exercise on for rivals 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we'll complete out the table. So step 6, total the weighted scores. For each column, add the values obtained in step 5, and we arrive at a total score for XYZ company of 435 points. Uh, for rival 1, 750 points. For rival 2, 685 points. For rival 3, 210 points. And for rival 4, 370 points. Step 7, what can be learned from the model? Reflect for a moment on the information contained in the SMART model. Are there any messages emerging? Look at the comparison and ask yourself, so what? It is clear from the model that XYZ company occupies the middle position measured against the industry's key success factors and or attributes. It appears that XYZ company will be not a market leader. It may not even be a market challenger. In fact, it may more likely be a market follower. Having arrived at this conclusion, market strategies expected of market followers can be adopted. For relative cost competencies, attributes, the model indicates that XYZ company ranks second from the bottom, while rival one places first. So the relative cost competency is a key success factor in the industry, and the firm occupies second last place, then the model has identified rival one as a significant threat and relative cost competency as a weakness for our firm. Therefore, the model suggests that XYZ companies relative cost competency requires immediate attention and or resources, acquisitions, to improve your value chain. The first two key success factors of quality and product performance and brand image score very well when compared to all the other rivals except for rival two, which would suggest that the firm's marketing and promotion materials should focus on these key success factors, as in all things we should play to our strengths. The real value of this model is the critical thinking process. It is rather straightforward to input the data into the model. The hard part is the critical thinking and analysis of the message that the model provides. Recall that business models are not intended to make the decision, but they do assist decision makers in arriving at a well-informed decision. Keep seeking answers to the so what questions until no further so what's emerge from examination of the model. Now a moment on additional uses. The SMART model assists the decision makers in considering making market entry strategy. Have a look at this new table. There are 196 nations in the world, if you count Taiwan, uh, with which we might consider establishing a trading relationship. How can we examine so many possibilities? We drop them into this funnel, such as the SMART model, and have them go through a filtering process that only the goal falls out the bottom. That would be helpful. The SMART model can be used to assist in determining which country might be the best fit for a firm going international. Once again, we enter the countries. In this case, we feel that are candidates for consideration. We modify the earlier SMART by adding new rows at the top of the chart. These two rows are titled Go, No Go attributes. In other words, those attributes that are absolutely necessary for a host country to possess before you would consider establishing a trading relationship. They might consider the rule of law or its absence, currency export restrictions, high tariffs, a non-English speaking population, political instability, and so on, as attributes that are so important, so critical to the decision that if these attributes are not favorable, then there'd be no further need to consider those countries as a possible host. 
after careful consideration by my client, currency export restrictions and political instability have been subjectively selected as the go-no-go -go attributes. If they exist, then the country that have those will not be considered further. So the key success factors and attributes necessary for a hypothetical firm to be successful in the industry in a host country are now entered onto the table. They are the presence of technology infrastructure, the rule of law, cross-cultural considerations, gross national product, and educational demographics. Nigeria and East Timor have been rejected by the go-no-go -no -go considerations we talked about earlier. The model suggests that Hungary might be the best choice to host our business, followed by India, and by China being the last choice. You might establish the threshold that must be achieved by rival countries before further research and evaluation takes place. In this example, the CEO might determine that only those countries that achieve a weighted score of 600 be considered. In this case, only Hungary and India would be further analyzed as possible host countries. The model reveals which country would seem to be the best fit for the host country, as well as a country that appears to be least attractive. However, these results have been based on the current data obtained by our research. But what do you think the results would be in five years from now? Do you think the results might be different? Would China be a better option for mid to long term direct foreign investment? Notice the value of allocated to China for the rule of law in this model, a low five out of 10 grade. But I think most would conclude that this value might be higher in five years. Having undertaken the process of assigning values to reflect where we think the countries will be five years out, another smart might be generated, capturing this new data, this new information, and as a consequently, new conclusions could be drawn from the smart model. Can you see how this model could be used as an aid in purchasing a photocopier, a new automobile, or even a graduate school selecting as to whom to admit from 3,000 applicants? A photocopier's key success factors attributes might be pages per minute, brand service reputation, cost, etc. Automobile attributes such as safety features, kilometers per liter, service, warranties, etc. Graduate schools go no go would include GPA averages and the possession of an undergraduate degree. In closing this portion of the discussion, let me add, whenever you have to make a decision between options, choices, a strategist must have a decision criteria matrix. The decision criteria matrix will demonstrate what factors, what attributes were considered in determining which option choice should be recommended. A smart model fulfills this requirement. The model is both qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative in that it's informed subjectivity and qualitative in that the data, the research, can inform the actual values entered. Now let us turn to a tool that often goes with a SMART, and that is the strategic group map, the SGM. To construct a strategic group map, follow these four steps. First, identify several competitive characteristics that differentiate the firm within the industry. Second, plot the firm on two variable axes using pairs of differentiating characteristics. Third, assign firms that fall about the same quadrant to the same strategic group. Fourth, draw circles around the strategic group. The circle should represent the relative size of the group's share of the total industry or other metrics that might be of interest for the axis being examined. Here are some guidelines you should observe. First, the variables selected as axes should not be highly correlated, but they should be exposed to big differences in how competitors compete. Second, be prepared to use several strategic maps if you have good data that warrants additional models to make your case. Third, recall as we discussed a few moments ago, China's rule of law and other variables might be anticipated to shift dramatically in the next five years. These emerging trends and shifts could be plotted against an XY axis uh, applied to the strategic group map. So a collection of strategic group maps can also provide past, present, and future data. This will provide you a sense of direction, trend lines as to how the firms are moving within the strategic group map matrix measured against different axes. This modeling could help you justify why a developing country might be selected for market entry despite its current low evaluation, but its anticipated position a few years down the road. Here are some suggested X and Y axes arising from competitive characteristics they have in common. 
You'll note sell in the same price quality range, have comparable product line breadth, emphasize the same distribution channels, use the same product attributes to appeal to similar type of buyers, use identical technology approaches, offer buyers similar services, cover the same geographical areas, and others. And indeed, these accesses can be mixed and to provide a wide range of combinations and permutations. Let's look at one. Here is a smart for three rivals in the video industry. From research and data and information available, we have concluded that this smart fairly represents a competitive strength assessment for these three firms. We might conclude for this smart, Netflix has a significant competitive advantage. They have the largest content library and they continually refresh it. Their streaming operations is superior because of the significant number of electronic devices available to stream Netflix content, all part of the Internet of Things. The Amazon is slightly less on the per monthly basis than Netflix, but it is marginal. The Netflix brand is solidified in the industry. Blockbusters has a strong brand recognition, but doesn't possess the streaming availability of Netflix and has lower content volume. We start by creating a matrix with the X and Y access. We identify the accesses. In this case, we have selected convenience and value, two of the key success factors and attributes we needed to be successful in this industry. We assign metrics for the access. They can be low, medium, high, or they might be local, regional, national, or international. Or in this case, they might be simply the actual weights as supplied by the smart model analysis data earlier and migrated over to this model and onto the access. Convenience and value are key success factors. Available content is represented by the size of the icon, the balloon. This significantly sets Netflix apart from the rest. Convenience includes the overall assessment of the viewing options available. Cable options are the lowest value since they have the least options available. Amazon would be one of the strongest competitors. However, Netflix has the largest content library along with the second lowest subscription price contributing to its value score. Amazon is priced marginally lower. Other firms have not been shown in this smart as they are insignificant in comparison with these three major players. Overall, Netflix is the best provider with the best position in the market with the largest viewing options and the largest content library and the most competitive price. Well, that concludes this. I hope you've enjoyed this particular video and find it of some value to it. It's one in a series of 30 to 40 strategic thinking concepts um, on the YouTube video set. Our next in the series will be an examination of the SWOT analysis and how it informs and migrates the data over into a TOES analysis. And then that TOES analysis enables us to look and develop strategies and prioritize our strategies for our strategic plans. Once again, hope you've enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.